I ordered the tractor with a cab. This uh, cab option is close to a $10,000 option. But after weighing the needs and, I guess, wants, I decided that the cab was going to be required when I ordered the tractor. Uh, it's pretty well loaded up. Uh, the 4720 model in particular, John Deere includes a lot of features as standard, which would be optional or dealer installed on the lesser 4000 series. Uh, it includes the air ride seat. Uh, also, it includes the rear wiper and rear lights as part of the 4720 package. Options I did add include uh, the uh, rear view mirrors, which I find to be quite handy. Not necessarily for looking behind you, but for looking back and down at the implement you are towing. Uh, when I was using the dirt mover, those things were quite handy, so you don't have to look around quite so much. The cab is not very huge. It can't be with a utility size tractor. But one person fits in there quite nicely. Uh, you really can't have any riders though. It's just not big enough. Maybe a small child, but uh, I, I guess I would say that's probably a stretch. The uh, cab is equipped with the heat and air as part of the cab package. So that's not an option. And uh, the heat and air does work uh, fairly well. I've had this thing out on 90 degree days and high humidity and it does a wonderful job of keeping things cool. And I've also had it out in the winter time and it does a nice job of, of uh, heating and uh, defrosting the windows. Uh, with the snow blower running it tends to blow snow all over you. And it kept the uh, snow melted off the windows pretty quickly. Uh, it does include a dome light, which in this case I have turned off. It does have a switch position if I so desire. There's also a sun visor attachment and a small rear view mirror, which is uh, kind of handy, but not so much. The uh, dashboard is uh, pretty well complete. It does have your tachometer and your fuel gauge and a temperature gauge. Everything else is idiot lights, but it also does have that uh, the screen at the bottom which you can call up more functions and features such as speeds, hours, PTO speeds, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it also lights for practically every feature you have. Uh, I would say the dashboard is fine, no issues with that. On the left hand side there is the optional speed match switch, or, well, motion match. The idea behind this feature, the hydrostat is computer controlled. And by engaging that switch, which it is currently in that position, if you load the drawbar, or the drawbar load becomes toward the upper limit of what the tractor wants to do with your current speed you're asking for, it will simply just um, slow down the hydrostat. So, if you get into a loaded situation, say with a dirt mover, and you get it in good to where the tractor wants to spin, instead of so much spinning, it'll almost slow to a crawl. Uh, I find that thing works quite well. I was actually kind of amazed how well this thing would do on the drawbar with the uh, um, dirt mover on it. Down here on the side, we have switches for the front wiper and the horn which was an option and also a lever to engage and disengage the front wheel assist the turn signal switch is there kind of hiding underneath the lever on this side we have our lights um, a switch to let you access various functions on the dashboard the lights and the throttle is here with the key switch uh, down below here on the side, as I was discussing earlier, we have our joystick. This is mainly to control the loader. Being a utility tractor, a loader is pretty common on utility tractors, and therefore they built it into the tractor as a standard feature. This particular one has been equipped with that third function switch, in which they pop out a little cover and install a switch there. So using this, I'm able to totally control things like that from a blade with ease. Over here on the side we have the three-point hitch 
control. Um, it works fairly well. I do have some trouble getting it to an exact position and keeping it there. But uh, I found with a little bit of finesse the thing works just fine. Switches. The tractor was optioned up with the um, extra feature cruise control. So some of these switches are regarding that. Um, this switch here controls uh, the rollout. You can program the thing with two different rollouts. When you take your foot off the sp uh, speed, like you're trying to stop, you can either have it stop real fast or roll out and stop real slow. Um, if you're on a grass type application, you'd want to roll out slow. If you're trying to do some very accurate loader work with it, you'd want it to stop in a hurry. This lets you set two different ones up and then switch between the two. The next switch there in the middle is the function switch. Um, it lets you either set uh, a particular speed and you're pushing on the top, if you, it will let you lock in a particular speed, a normal cruise control if you will. In a nutshell, you get going uh, the speed you want to go, and by pushing that as the mode, um, when you push the top, you basically engage cruise control, and the tractor will attempt to maintain that speed no matter what the throttle setting is. Um, that's kind of interesting and handy. The bottom one is kind of a different take on that. What it does is it lets you set the speed with the go pedal, the forward or reverse pedal, all the way down. Uh, and you can set different speeds for both forward and reverse. And the idea being, if you want to go three miles an hour, uh, you basically drive three miles an hour and push that switch. And then when you got to push the pedal mash the floor, you only go three miles an hour. So you can go three to zero. It basically amplifies the movement of the pedals, so it makes the tractor much more controllable. The uh, third switch there is how you can either bump the speed up or bump the speed down. It's kind of like the switch on a cruise control on a car. Um, I find the thing works uh, quite well and uh, am, am thrilled that it makes the tractor much more controllable as far as being able to do uh, various things with it. Speaking of pedals, there are two pedals on the right hand side. One is forward and one is reverse. The more you push down on that pedal, the faster you'll go, either forward or reverse. That's similar to a lot of uh, hydrostatic lawnmowers. And really those are just running two um, position sensors that then feed the computer. There's actually a computer running the hydrostatic. There's no mechanical interconnection to the hydrostatic unit, which is underneath the floorboards here, the cab. On the left hand side you do have individual wheel brakes and uh, it's taking me a little bit to get used to the fact that the brakes are on the left instead of the right but uh, we're getting there and uh, not a huge deal. Over here on the side there is a parking brake handle so you can lock the brakes up and get out the tractor and also there is a three range speed gear so basically you have a hydrostatic unit in front of a three speed crash box. So you basically got a 0 to 4 mile an hour A range, a 0 to 8 mile an hour B range, and a 0 to 15 or so mile an hour C range. So you pick the appropriate range for what work you're doing and then use the hydrostat to serve the need. Back over here on the console now. We do have the electric PTO switch, and the electric over hydraulic. It's a hydraulic wet clutch PTO. Uh, basically pull it up and it comes on and push it down and it goes off. In the middle there is the rear wiper switch and uh, next to that is the auto throttle which is kind of a unique little function. If you turn that on with the tractor just sitting here at idle, you turn that on as you press the pedal to go forward or reverse. It modulates both the throttle and the speed. So you are able to then um, basically drive it like a car. It's kind of like driving a car with an automatic transmission. 
Um, very useful for if you're just tooling around, moving around, not doing any serious work with the thing. Um, Kubota invented the idea and John Deere co-opted it, but uh, it definitely was a worthwhile little option to have on this thing. And over here on the side are the hydraulic controls. So that uh, first switch there is an enable switch. First switch on the left is the enable switch for the third function on the loader deal. I'm sure that it has something to do with a lawyer or something. They wanted to make it so you had to make some sort of a physical choice before the switch on the loader joystick would work, I guess. Uh, it's no big deal. You basically just push it once after you start the tractor and the third function switch becomes active and works. The uh, second switch there is the hydraulic diverter for the loader. Um, you Basically, with it off, um, the loader functions as normal to the joystick. And if you push the top there, it lights the light, a little red light there behind the gear. And now the hydraulics are all routed to the rear outlets on the tractor. So uh, works just fine, uh, no issues really. The other two are those uh, third function uh, hydraulics on the upper deal, one of which is currently the top link on the three-point. Those are just rocker switches. Uh, basically, you can uh, rock it one way and the hydraulics go one way and rock it the other way and it goes the other way. It does a job and, uh, like I said, we managed to get all the switches in this tractor for all the different features. There is one switch uh, missing. There was a switch for the rear lights on the cab. And the reason having a separate switch for the rear lights would be if you spend some time on the road you don't want to drive down the road at night with your rear work lights on. You tend to blind people coming up behind you. So the switch is there to be able to turn off the rear lights uh, when you have the headlights or work lights on. I don't use this tractor much on the road, so that switch was uh, removed from the panel and placed underneath the panel. If I had the need, I could switch something out uh, well, because the switches just pop out, such as the uh, rear wiper switch there. So if I suddenly had a need to do a lot of road work with this thing, I would uh, probably flip out my, uh, switch out the rear wiper with the uh, light switch. So not a huge deal. Three switches and the whole panel comes up. Fun part sticking and tucking it all back in, but uh, everything works just fine. On the side here, there's a little lever. Um, it basically functions to either lock the joystick or choose regen or no regen uh, depending on whether you're using it with the loader or not uh, I found my leg hits this thing and, and knocks it into no regen or locks it so uh, <laughs> that's kind of a little slight design flaw there but uh, we're, we're managing to work around it